Hi everyone, I'm Joe Flick. I'm with the Montana State Library. I'm your CE coordinator. And today it's my pleasure to bring you Aspen Basics number six, the final Aspen, <laughs> uh, final session in Aspen Basics. We will repeat this course down the road a little bit, but today we're going to talk about how to claim CE credits and how to apply for Montana State Library certification in Aspen. And I'm going to give you a very quick preview or a little bit of information about the new strategic track, um, which we are launching this month. Uh, so a brand new track. And if you've always if you've had trouble with the CE categories in the past and uh, find yourself kind of scrambling to get um, extra credits in one or another category, this track might be useful to you. Or if you just want to, you know, like focus your uh, um, professional development over the next few years on something specific, it's really designed for that. But I want to share something first on the screen here that I, I just want to ask um, who's ever seen when you're in Aspen something like this. And so you can raise your hand or um, if you're watching live, you, there's an option to um, sort of or just let out a scream, which is what <laughs> happens when you see it um, in real life. <laughs> in the chat box, you could put something in. Yeah, there's a couple people posting in the chat. Yeah, I have seen it. I have. No. Oh, there you go, Sarah. You, you're one of the lucky ones. Um, this is what we affectionately call at the State Library a yellow error screen. Um, it looks much more scary than it really is. You have not broken anything. Um, the truth is that can't really, you can't break anything in Aspen. Even I can't really break anything in Aspen a couple of times I've tried. Um, this actually has a lot of information in it that's very useful to our tech people. So if you ever see one of these, I would like to ask you to um, to take a screenshot of the, in, the entire screen, include all of this stuff in the yellow box, and then open open a help ticket and in Aspen and send that that uh, screen capture along and just say, I found a yellow screen. That's all you need to say. They will know what that means. And this gives them all the information to go directly to where the problem is and fix it. Now, this particular screen was one I encountered this morning because we migrated um, much of Aspen's database to a new server this week. I didn't do it. But when that happened, especially the, um, the calendar kind of got a little messed up, some of the links in the calendar. And uh, a screenshot like this really helped our tech people zero in on the problem and fix it pretty quickly. So if you ever find one, you are doing us a big favor by making a screenshot and sending it in. So that's my big, big tip of the day. As a couple people said, oh, yes, there were a lot of these in the early days of Aspen, but now not so much. I also want to point out that if you go to the Aspen calendar, which you'll find over here, or if you're on the Aspen, the when you log first log into Aspen, not even log in, you don't even have to log in, just if you go to aspen.mt.gov and you come to this page. No, oh, that's the wrong page, sorry. This is the page I wanted to show you. This is the page that you get if you just put in aspen.mt.gov and you come to the calendar, you're gonna to find today's event and I want you to do that right now. Um, and just uh, because I just posted the handouts for today and these will be, these are really just tip sheets. You can also find most of this information in the knowledge base um, by going to the Aspen help area. Wait a second, well, my internet connection is starting to get slower like it does in the summer here in East Glacier. So here is today's event, just gonna open that up. I wanna point out that the handouts are down here under event resources. So we're going to 
first start, talk about claiming credits in Aspen. Then we'll talk about applying for your certification and then viewing your certificate, viewing and printing your certificate. So let's get started. Starting with claiming events. So I am logged in. I always know that because up here in the yellow box to the right hand side, it says, welcome, Joanne Flick, that's me. And so if I want to claim credits now, here is an event happening today that you're all attending. So if you've opened it up to apply for certification, mine says register now. If you've already registered for today, that's the first way you can get your credit is just to register for an event and then attend the event. Because I'll take um, attendance and mark you attended later. So if you, if you're, if you haven't, if you see the register now, not you're already registered for this event. You have to be logged in in order to register. So I'm logged in. I can register now. I have to hit this submit button. And then it'll say, I'm ready. Well, I just, you don't actually get to see this page. This is only one that comes to me. But if I go back to, so now that I'm registered, it actually will show on my to-do list over here under my Aspen admin page. So I've got it right here. Now I'll go back in later and mark myself attended and then the credit will be will be secured. I'll mark I'll mark all of you attended as well. So that's the first way you get your credit. If you say didn't get to attend Aspen and you don't want to register for things that you're not planning to attend, because then I'm going to mark you not attended and you'll have to re-enter it later. So no real sense in doing that. Um, just go to the event page again. If you say you wanted to say it's um, you want to watch the last Aspen event. Um, last Aspen webinar training. So let's go to that one. One of the things we do at the State Library is when we are holding a webinar, um, we have a, the link that's listed for that event up until the event is the Zoom link for the meeting, the live meeting. But after the event today, I will be taking, let's say this one has been basics course right here. I If I hit this link right here, it'll actually take me to the Vimeo page of this recording. So we changed the link from the event to the recording. Um, it sometimes takes a day for us to get that video uploaded. It has to be processed. It takes a little bit of time. There's a little technical stuff in the background, but um, we do change that link. And so it makes it really easy to find things. So if you miss something, you can go right back to the Aspen events page. And that link within a day or two um, will link directly to the vi video. And we just started doing that. What was it, Pam, maybe six months ago? it just occurred to us, oh my gosh, we could change that link and make it so much easier for people to find things. And so we started doing it. Um, so that makes it really easy. But this doesn't get you any credit, like that register now link got you um, all registered for the course and then um, you attended and I mark you as attended. This doesn't get you any credit. Now to get credit, you have to go back to the event and when I, if I if I watch the recording, I could hit this and I'm logged in, I can hit the register now link and and claim that credit for that course, which I could do because that's really neat, Joe, because sometimes I get all registered for stuff and then I've got somebody come in who needs, you know, 30 minutes worth of help. And it's like, dang it, I missed it. And now I've got to go back and find it on Vimeo. And that is just a really great idea. Thank you. You're, like I said, I, why we didn't think of this a year ago or two years ago, I don't know, but it really is very helpful, I think. So, um, yeah. And if if sometime you find you get there and it's not the link is is still to the Zoom page and it's passed and it won't connect to anything, um, 
just just wait a little bit or send a note to the facilitator and say, D did you get that recording? It could be that the recording was messed up or they didn't record it. Um, and so then the, it won't be changed. But normally that's our, our usual way. We go ahead and fix the link and put it to the Vimeo page. So that's the second way. So I'm going to show you three ways to get your credit. That's the second way. The third way is to use the events calendar. Again, you always have to be logged in for any of these to work because Aspen needs to know who you are. It's not going to give just anybody credit, only, you know, shall we say, librarians who are logged in can get credit. You have to be you have to be valid, a valid person. Yeah. So once you get into um, the events page, wait for it to log in a little bit. You'll see that the this always, always lo um, loads this way. So we have the the current month, but if you scroll on down, Aspen lists all of our meetings and continuing education activities in reverse chronological order. So at the very top of the list, you see the things that are planned the furthest out. Oops, sorry. I dropped my mouse. There, OK. So you see something that's planned all the way for next spring. So you do have to scroll back a little bit. You see that? And I often recommend you just kind of expand the number that you can see, the number of events that you can see, you can scroll back. But say you are, you just went to the Trails webinar, although that Trails webinar didn't happen. So I actually need to take this off the list because it was, it was um, delayed. So I have to fix that. But if you went and you're logged in, you should see this green button over here. And um, I'm going to go ahead, since I went to the Aspen basic course number five, I'll show you how it looks on this one. I just click on the CE credit. I get this little box up here that says, are you sure you want that credit? They don't want to, you know, because people do sometimes click on things by mistake. And it says, please confirm that you wish to add this event to your continuing education track participation. I click yes, and it will be it's thinking about it. See that little circle around here? And I, the other thing, clue in Aspen is when that little shadow, light green or light blue something um, appears, it's thinking about it. So give it a few seconds. But it'll actually add my credit that way. So that's the third way. The, um, this, was, this was a Chuck innovation. He um, started adding this to the way that people could add CE credit. And we I found, especially if you're one of those people who keeps um, all your information on a separate calendar, and then you go in and add your CE credits, you know, later, hither, hither and yon, or if you went to um, a bunch of uh, things at MLA and you have to add a whole bunch of credits, here are all the MLA events. It just makes it super, a lot easier to do. So they're kind of, it's kind of a shortcut. So any questions about adding your CE credit? I'm going to add one more little tip. Um, so if you attend live, your credit will actually show up as attended. And that's another thing that we've sort of started doing fairly recently is actually keeping attendance at the state library events. But if you attend if you attended MLA, we don't have the attendance records from MLA, so we can't mark you attended. You're on if that's on the honor system. But I think what will happen the next time that you apply for your certification is that when I'm sending um, a list of your credits to your supervisor, if you're a director, that would be somebody on your board. It'll certainly be nice to see that you've attended a lot of these events live, and those are all ready validated. Um, credits. So uh, it's good, I think, to um, if you if you if, if most of the credits you get from the state library are for events that you attend live, you'll have quite a few of your credits that are already validated. And so that just might make you look a little more honest, I guess. I don't know. 
Anyway, so all, I will just I'll break yeah. in here and just say, Sarah, I was going to answer this question, but I thought you probably should answer it. Joe. Um, Sarah asked if there's no green button, then she already added it. Right. Which is as long as there was credit for it. Um, if you have clicked the green button, you don't get to do it again. So, yeah, if there's no button there, then you probably did add it. That's how I understand it. But yes. You can verify that. And if you didn't register for something, but you attended it. And I noticed you were here, Sarah, and then I would have added your atten your registration and attendance for you. So you won't see the green button. At least you're not supposed to see the green button if you've already um, claimed credit for that. Good question. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay, so three ways to add CE credit. So are we ready to move on to applying for certification? Because that's the next thing on our list. Because I guess my other comment would be you could go to your track and look at your events to make sure that you did get credit for an event. Yes. Or you got yes. to show how to verify that or, or yeah. that comes up in your next part. Yeah, I think that's a great that I will show how to do that, because when you do apply great. for certification, um, the process that you do use to do that also lets you review all of your your CE credit. So let's go back to searching Aspen. Now, like most things in Aspen, there are two different ways to do this. One is this continuing education button way over on the right hand side. Oh, here's Sarah. I see it. <laughs> I see the, for the basis course number five and I attended. So I just add my CE. Yeah. Click on the green button and add your certification and you should get that little um, dialogue box that comes up. And let me know if you have any trouble with that. So over here, this little button over here, the continuing education button brings you to this page. This page is where it's kind of the continuing education dashboard. So you notice right here, it says view continuing education credits, search learning list, all kinds of stuff up there. You can add these independent learning events. I suppose this is actually the fourth way you can add credits. Um, you can, if, if there's, um, like here's the trails webinar. These are just CE events. So in the Aspen calendar, you're going to see meetings and all kinds of deadlines and everything else that's listed in the Aspen calendar. But if you went to say cocktails with Ivan, the session at um, that Jan Zuha, Zuha did at MLA, you would click on that in the drop down box and then hit go. It's going to take you to another page. I didn't go to that one, so I don't want to claim those credits. Um, let's see, was there anything at MLA that I did go to? I don't know. I don't think I did. It was one thing I went to, but I think I might have already claimed credit for it, so it's not on the list. That's the other thing. Once you've claimed credit for something, it won't show up on this drop-down list for you. So that's another way you can add in credits. Anything that happens in Montana, I try to get it onto this list. So if it's for more than one library, and I'll even add it to the list if you're doing a big event at your library that you've got a whole bunch of people going to, um, let me know and I can add it to this list. It won't show up in the um, Aspen calendar, but it, can, it will show up in this list. So I, I can do that if you're gonna have, you know, 15 or 20 people going to a training at your library and it would just be easier to have it on the list than everybody entering it separately because this is the other option. Say you go to a training at the American Library Association conference or you go to Web to Web Junction and attend one of their webinars, you have to fill out the asterisk sections of this form to add those credits. And really important, you have to click the save button at the bottom. Oh, and Nancy says, thanks for telling us it doesn't show once claimed. That's true. But just to confirm, let me go back to that. So this is another Chuck edition, go back a page. If I come down here, I can see all of my certification track activity. And like here is my library staff track. I want to see what credits I have listed. I click on the blue hypertext link in that and it shows me the entire record for my current state library 
certification library track. So it's a, I have a little progress bar here. It looks like I'm about three quarters of the way to renewing. Um, and if I scroll down, I can see the credit detail. Look at that. I need seven credits. There's a few, here's the, um, the uh, snapshot I need. It tells me I need seven credits in collection management, one credit in library services to the public and 12 credits overall, four in technology. So actually that actually acts up to 12. So it's perfect. All I need is 12 credits and I can um, renew my certification. But all of the events that you attended and the ones that um, uh, are actually MSL hosted, see that? Those are um, all recorded here. So the credit values, when that credit expires, and a lot of people do know that credits expire when they get to be four years old. And so that might be important if I watched a webinar that was um, pretty, you know, two or three years old, it might expire before I have time to actually renew my certification. So here are all my credits. So when I'm ready to actually apply for certification, I'll get a option here to change the, the status of my, of this certificate to submitted. So just so I can do that, let me go back one page. So I'm gonna go to this certification track. Actually, first I'm gonna to add today's session to my, let's see, where is it? Oh, maybe did I already add it? Today is the 5th, the 19th. Yeah, I did. See that? Okay. I added that course, today's course. I added the CE credit. So now if I go, this is actually not a real certification. <laughs> I've made this up. It's see, but I wanted to show you what it looks like when you're ready to submit your certification. It says this continuing education program track participation is eligible for submission and I can submit my application for certification right here. I do want to point out that it's a pretty good idea because the one issue that's still happening occasionally in Aspen is that we're, uh, you, you might have a duplicate credit somewhere. And so um, I think we figured out most of the issues with that. It was happening a lot more a year ago, but um, but like here is a duplicate credit right here. Uh, and I, I also wanted to show you that. So you wanna check your credits. This is one thing I look for when I go over your certification application before I issue your certificate. I can see right here, I've actually claimed this credit twice and it's shown up in Aspen twice. It shouldn't be that way. The only way to fix this is to submit a help ticket and point out and ask that, that one of these be deleted. So I'm not really eligible. I only have 60 and a half credits. So I'm not really eligible, but Aspen thinks I am at the moment. So I'm going to pretend to submit my application. Actually, I'm going to really, it, Aspen thinks I'm really submitting it. It's got a little please wait here. It's going to ask a couple things. Here's another um, tip, the validation position. Um, I. I could pick somebody else to be the person who validates my certificate. If you don't fill this out, then um, see it says submitted and it says the validation position is Tracy. I'm gonna have to um, ask you, send you an email and say, who, who do you want to validate your, your um, credits for you? And, and that's just gonna maybe delay you getting your certificate a week or so until you get back to me with that information and I update the record. So two little tips, just check through your credits and make sure you don't have a duplication like this because then I'll have to send you an email and say, you have duplicate credits and you're not really eligible for certification and we'll have to reset it, your certification back to not submit it until you make up those credits. So I will be submitting a help ticket to 
delete this whole record because it's totally bogus. But that's really how you submit. That's it. And then once you do that, what happens after that is that I about, I try to do this every week, but lately it's more like every month. Um, I get into Aspen and look at all the recently submitted certificates. And um, I look at who your person for to validate that certificate is. I peruse it and make sure there aren't any duplicate credits or that you have like posted something to a obviously really wrong category. Um, so like I might see something like the COVID-19 meetups posted in library services, the public, and I know there really should be posted to um, to library administration. And so I might um, question you about that. If I have any questions about the record and where, the way you've submitted things, you'll just get a friendly little email from me. And sometimes I have to meet up with people and we kind of go through the list and um, so I just, my job is just make sure that everything in your record is legitimate and meeting our requirements. And then I send it on to the person um, that uh, at your library who can validate that what you've submitted is actually a uh, fair reflection of the work that you've done, that, that you're not, you know, that you're not lying. <laughs> and so we, we use the honor system at the state library but it's the honor system with validation. So when you actually, you can put any credit you want in there, but somebody at your library has to say that they're legitimate, somebody else, not you. And so that's the only um, requirement. Then I issue your certificate and your certificate, once it's issued, let me show you that. Again, you go back to your Aspen admin page. This is your homepage in Aspen, your personal homepage. That record lives for ever in Aspen. Now, when we started Aspen up a couple of years ago, we brought over the most recent certifi certificate. So if you had a certificate in our old system, that one will show up here as your oldest one. In my case, it's this one way down here. But you can look at any of the other ones, like here's one that's issued. I'm gonna click on that. And it'll show you the entire record for that certificate. All in a few extra boxes that I have as the CE coordinator that you won't see, but all of the credits, you know, if you want to look back at something at, that you attended, you know, seven or eight years ago, you're wondering, huh, remember we went to see that panel exhibit that we did? Um, and I, Joe had that little training on that panel exhibit and about the Irish guys in Butte. You can actually look and see who the trainer was at that event. Um, it's a lot of information that is your information forever. You leave library world in Montana and go work someplace else, you can still log back into um, Aspen uh, from wherever you are and your records will always be available to you. Ah, Sarah has a very, oh, very good question. question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you change a submission if you put it in the wrong category? Well, you really, you can't actually, you have to submit a help ticket and, um, and our tech people will do that for you. So it's easy to do too, Sarah. And I'll tell you where the biggest, if, if in the next version of Aspen, we're hoping to actually fix this because let's, it's very easy when you're adding um, CE to have it go in the wrong category because we have a drop down box. Let me go back to that on the continuing education page. So at create a new. All right. So today I went to a training on Niche Academy. I'll just put this in. Pathways to Learning. Okay, and it was today and it was at one o'clock and it ended at 1.30. And it was the COSLA chief officers. Well, 
Well, it isn't any of these, so I'm going to have to. I'm going to leave it blank. This is not required. Anything that doesn't have an asterisk is not required. But since it's not in that list, I'm just going to write COSLA CE cohort. This is my professional group. And the trainer's name I do have to put in. So I'm going to put Darcy Smith. And I'm not actually going to save this one. But anyway, um, once I get down to this part, CE continuing education category, see it's got the asterisk, so it's required. The default is collection management and technical services. So if you forget to add in the correct um, CE category, it will default to collection management and technical services. And then I have to put in 0 0.05. It's, I'm actually not going to save this, but this is a very, very easy mistake to make. <laughs> so um, actually 0 0.5. Um, very easy mistake to, to, to make. And what I see when I when people are submitting their certifications and I see a bunch of things in collection management and technical services that don't make sense to me, I know that really that person just didn't they hit the save button before they finished everything and and didn't notice this um, little section here and it's so easy to do so don't don't beat yourself up about it let's say Sarah what else do you have to say what, what if they don't know which category to put it in call uh, contact me and um, I'll be happy to help you with that that's that's just send me a brief description of what the training is about. And Carly says, this may be a reach, but are podcasts considered continuing ed? I'm thinking most specifically in the collection management category. A podcast, like an audio podcast. Technically, no. Our, our, um, our requirements for what counts as CE under the our legacy tracks, you know, the library administrator track, the trustee track, and the staff track, are that it has to be a formal training event, like a classroom style event that is planned as as training and not sort of um, incidental training. So the, you you technically can't claim credit for that. Yeah, under our current under the current rules, but that's a very nice segue because you under the strategic track, um, as long as that event is part of your planned professional development um, plan, it's in your professional development plan that you're going to be um, spending a time listening to podcasts, you can actually claim credit for it. But there is a caveat there in Anything that you claim for self-directed learning, you can only you can only claim up to twenty credits, and you have to do three hours worth of work to claim one credit. So it's more like a college independent study. But if you were listening to podcasts um, once a week or uh, or a whole series of podcasts as part of your um, self-directed learning event that you planned, in then then you know it might be worth your while. So you need to come to my um, tr my introduction to the strategic track, which is going to be happening in June 2nd, I think, is when it's scheduled to learn a little bit more about that. But under our regular legacy tracks, you can't claim credit. So I'm not going to save this. And so we've talked about how to submit for CE. And the only last thing I have to talk about is how to print view and print your certificate. So again, back to continuing education. So here's an issued certificate right here. Again, if I click on this, I'll get to the record. It's a great question, Carly. Keep them coming. And you'll see at the top of the record right there, it says that the certificate status is issued and that I can view the certificate. I'm clicking on that. There's my certificate. Signed by Bruce and Jenny. Now I can print it. Um, and to do that, I just click to the right, a right click and off to print. And it's actually going to print as a PDF. 
So we no longer mail certificates, but your certificate lives forever in Aspen. So um, you can save it as a PDF and email it to somebody or you can print it and get some nice, you know, pretty paper to put it on. And that's, that's it. That's my entire presentation today. And um, I do wanna just uh, point out that you will see, let me click out of this. Um, that's not what I want. I'm gonna reload this page because it's not loading correctly. Probably my internet connection. And I just want to point out that the strategic track right now is um, live in Aspen. You can select and add the strategic track. So uh, the only thing about the strategic track is that you don't want to add any, don't want to collect any credits until after you've submitted your professional development plan. And what happens with the strategic track very simply is when I'm in, processing certificates. I'll also be looking for um, people who have added the strategic track and I'll send you an email with a, a quick uh, link to a Moodle course and get you enrolled in that course so that you can submit your professional development plan um, in the Moodle course. So you'll be enrolled in the Moodle course for the four years it takes you to complete your strategic track and um, Okay, fine. Come on. I just want, I'm going to go open a new Aspen page because it's being slow. So if you're the presenter of a program, do you get to claim CE for that? Yes, you get to claim double credit if you're the presenter. So um, you have to though, the only way to get that double credit is to enter it um, manually. But we actually encourage you to do that. Take take your double credit. You you earned it. All right. So what was I going to show you? Let's see. So um, on your certification dashboard page, you can see the only track I have not claimed yet is the trustee track. So um, I can't, if you want to add the certification track and you haven't already, I, I have the strategic track up here, so I can't add it. You will see it as an option down here. So you can go ahead and do that if you're interested in getting started. I really recommend the strategic track is you have to have completed um, certification at least once uh, some other way. That's the only really requirement. And then um, you'll hear from me about getting enrolled in the Moodle course and getting started on putting up your professional development plan. So you don't want to correct, collect any credits until your professional development plan has been submitted. But there'll be lots more information about that at the June 2nd webinar. So I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording.